All right, Yarok Field. This is an old favorite that uh, we played a ton of in Standard. That's had a few minor upgrades over the sets. Um, this lovely face down card here, because fixing bugs in Arena is overrated, is Obosh the Prey Piercer. Um, we're basically just playing this because it's a free roll. This is the main deck I had been working on and playing for a long time anyways. We were like, oh, it's all odd spells. You might as well give up a sideboard slot and have a 3-5 sometimes game one. Um, you'll note that my sideboard has a bunch of even costed cards in it because in sideboarded games, we are frequently going to give up the companion and board in even costed things. Um, this deck, unlike, um, unlike a lot of other ramp decks in this format is not just a purely linear ramp deck. So the thing that this deck does different is it has things like Disfigure and Maelstrom Pulse in the main deck as interaction, as well as extra removal and things like discard spells post-board to really be kind of a control deck that finishes with Field of the Dead. Um, that being said, I think this being more controlling with Field of the Dead as an eventual win condition makes us uniquely bad against things like... Um, the other ramp decks in the format. So ramp decks that are playing Ugin and Ulamog are difficult to impossible for this deck, while the aggressive matchups tend to be very reasonable because we have a lot of cheap one-for-ones that can interact with them. So this deck is in the fan favorite section of my website for a reason because I think there's a number of matchups like the aggressive decks where it really shines and is genuinely good. But I do think as long as there's Ugin and Ulamog decks running around the format, I, I would doubt that this deck could ever be tier one because those matchups are going to be difficult to impossible so let's go ahead and jump on into some games here with this and see how it goes hoping for hoping to run into like aggressive decks or controlling decks that are explicitly not ulamog decks bib Thank you for the entire year of support and for the 12 months and for the tier three at that. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Thanks for keeping me around. Opponent's playing Yorian, so I can probably afford to keep this slow hand. At this point in time, do you have any opinions on balance and historic? Nope. Formats. Formats existed for four days. Three and a half days. Thoughts on removing removal in the sideboard for an Ashiok or two. What problem are you solving in my deck by adding Ashiok to it? Why is that a good addition? Title. The title should be updated. Twitch not go. Yeah, title's good. So again, to un under to go to focus on understanding why matchups are good or why matchups are bad, I think adding something like Ashiok to my deck to try and help the ramp matchup shows a fundamental misunderstanding of why the matchup is bad. The matchup isn't bad because they go faster than us, like that doesn't really matter. The matchup is bad because my opponent is able to go over the top of what we're able to do. Field of the Dead is a worse ramp payoff in the ramp mirror than the other options are. So, like, slowing them down with something like Ashiok doesn't really accomplish anything because that's not the reason why you're losing the game. You're losing the game because it's going long and then their payoff is better than yours. They're going to incidentally just have, have cards as they go long. Field can never beat Ugin, am I wrong? That's that's really not true. Ulamog, Ulamog's definitely the harder nut to crack, because we can't interact with it. Ugin, we have Assassin's Trophies and Maelstrom Pulses and stuff, and we can take it off the table. Like, obviously, Ugin's going to sweep our board when he comes down, but you can recover from a board sweeper pretty well. 
You know what? I should play a land so this doesn't get Mystic Disputed, probably. So, you are right in that you're not going to beat an Ugin that sits in play, but, like, most people aren't beating an Ugin that sits in play, so you need to kill it. The problem is Ulamog, because you can't kill it. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, you, so the, the problem is, Logan, is that when they cast their Ulamog, they take you off two mana. So, like, generally speaking, you're not going to be able to recover from that. Like, if their Ulamog comes anywhere close to on time, it's going to happen before you could really get going. Mapai, thanks for the 16 months, I appreciate that, welcome back. Make some zomboys and girls here. Oh, that just worked? Huh. Alright. In, in for another Field of the Dead. Because they almost assuredly are going to have sweepers, and having two Fields of the Dead will help me recover faster. Ceremonious Rejection would be absurd in this format. Not really, because, like, another part of the Ulamog aspect is, like, it, uh, it, it exiles your two best things when they cast it. So, like, you're right. If you have Ceremonious Rejection, you get the privilege of only getting three for one by Ulamog. So, Whirlwind Denial is going to draw dead as the game goes late. And things like Summary Dismissal which will exist eventually, um, are just, they're just kind of slow. Now, something to think about here, and this is actually another reason why this deck that we're playing today is going to struggle a little bit, is previously these matchups were pretty close to unlosable against these Esper decks because you had Nexus of Fate to prevent you from decking out. And now that's not an option anymore. So like we could very realistically deck out in a matchup like this is a is a real concern No, you, you just don't want to play bad cards. The reason, the reason why Nexus was an okay card to play is because it was a genuinely good card that also helped you not deck out. Let's skip to the good part. You should just play Yorian? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's just like what we're supposed to do. I could see that. For the 19 months, KYP, I appreciate that. Welcome back. Wow, that's rude. Holy crap. I'm hesitant to add 20 cards to a field deck without Golos. 
You just make two of the 20 cards go loose. You just, you just play two copies of Golos. Yeah, the 20, 20 cards gotta come from somewhere, right? Stole our boy, chat. They took him, they took him, and they're using him against us. Yeah, I, I agree, Rex Vector. I don't know. Maybe it's time to just retire this one from the website. If it can't, if it can't beat Control Decks without Nexus of Fate, and it can't beat Ulamog Ugin Decks, like there's not, there's not a whole lot, there's not a whole lot left in the range of things that you can still be competitive against, right? Uh, yeah, Gonti theoretically lets you deck your opponent with the uh, Party Bus Infinite Loot. There are not any basics left in my deck to get with that Fabled Passage. Yeah, I just started timing people out that are suggesting Guy is Blessing because they don't, they don't understand why cards are bad. <laughs> again, again, for people that don't get it, Nexus of Fate was a good solution to decking out because Nexus of Fate is just a good Magic the Gathering card. Guy is Blessing is not a good Magic card. It's, just, it's not. Also, like, what's the actual text on Guy's Blessing? It actually doesn't stop you from decking out on its own, right? Am I, like, completely forgetting the text box on it? You have to mill it to stop you from decking. Okay, yeah. So, like, it doesn't even actually do... It doesn't even actually do what people are suggesting it does. Yeah, you'd have to have two of them. Yeah, just... I'm gonna leave this in the companion zone for now because I have plenty of mana so I can like pick it up and play it in the same turn Yeah, I think, I think the most realistic suggestion that's been in chat is just play 80 cards in Yorian to try and mitigate decking. 
Like, there's definitely enough playable cards that you can put that many cards in your deck, right? I, I definitely do not think Field is a good is the best payoff in this format. I think it's probably fine, but I also think it's worse than the other ramp payoffs. The other ramp payoffs are really good. What about Jason Oracle? Again, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth about playing good cards in your deck. And then also understand that Nexus of Fate was only good as decking insurance because you didn't have to draw it. The reason why you deck in this deck chat is because Cavalier of Thorns is flipping shit into your graveyard. So like putting a random, putting a random, random crappy card in your deck that doesn't actually, that you have to actually draw doesn't solve your problem. Speaking, speaking to Twitch chat is a lot like dealing with my five and six year old. You have to speak slowly and repeat yourself frequently. He is allowed to watch TV today. In fact, I gave him I gave him his phone back last night because he was he was very good. I was I was very impressed with how well he took his. Uh... I'm gonna concede. I don't feel like playing this match anymore, and I'm gonna I'm gonna switch to uh I'm gonna switch to a Yorian deck. I don't, I don't think we can ever beat a control deck with this deck as constructed. And if we can't beat control and we can't beat other ramp decks, this deck's not playable. So let's try and build it as Yorian. So that way we can maybe have a chance as, as a control deck against control decks. It's also, it's also like trivially easy to build Yorian decks, chat. Like there's so many good cards in Magic these days. Like step one is literally just take all these things that are two ofs or twos and threes and like make them fours. And then I get to put things in here that I didn't have room for, like Thrag Tusk. We can add a couple of Golos. Yeah, like Yor Yorian is like such such an easy easy requirement to have. It, like, lets me put more basics in my deck that I probably wanted in my deck anyways. I'm gonna add, uh, one red-white triome and one red-black triome or run do I'm gonna add both the red-white triomes here so we can occasionally activate Golos um we want we want about half our deck to need be land so I need about six more lands in my deck filter not basics all right what lands do I want Memorial to Folly could be okay. Castle's okay. Bajuka Bog's fine if we added a... Since we added a thing. 
No, Nissa, Nissa's not. Nissa gets your lands killed, Jet. Don't play Nissa. Probably want to scale up my green sources a little bit. Green, blue, or screen black? Guild gate. Oh, do I not have an Abzan Trium in here? I don't. That's, that's much better than Golgari Guildgate. Good catch. Oh, and this is blue-green? Oh, yeah. So we'll just get one of each Trium in here. Yeah, good call. Good call. Good call. Thanks, chat. Forty-one lands is probably good. We were playing thirty. We we're playing thirty-one or thirty-two before. It goes thirty-one. Yeah. The thriving lands are all tap tools, right? I don't think I really want those. Yeah, maybe because we have slots now, we just want some Ulamogs at the top end. Do you want any twos or fours? We yeah, ask Obosh. No, I don't think so. I wasn't really not playing twos or fours because of Obosh. We just like played Obosh because so I wasn't playing those cards anyways. How many green sources are in here? One, two, God, this, how many? I wish there was, I wish the deck editor was useful for t actually hauling useful things about your mana base. So this is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21 green, 21 green proportionally is like seven, 16 or 17 green in a normal size deck. Probably about right. No, I don't need a Crater Hoof Behemoth. If my Crater Hoof Behemoth, if Crater Hoof Behemoth is lethal, I should just be killing them with zombies. Stop it. What deck would I recommend? Uh, I think Blue Eyed Ors is a good choice. Being linear is good. I'm also not entirely convinced that Yarok's even good in this deck chat, if I'm being honest with you. If I'm if I'm being level, I think I want to play less than four Yarok. I'm gonna leave two for now and see how he feels, but like. Even an 80 card deck, like, yeah. Yeah, probably just want to change it to Salty Field. Let's try, let's try this. I'm going to try this. Maelstrom Pulse and Disfigure Replaceable. Disagree. Isn't growth spiral legal and historic? It is. I would encourage you to count the number of black and colorless lands in my deck. And then come back to me on if you think we should be playing. 
Growth Spiral over Explore. Our deck, our deck's also, like, largely not playing out at instant speed, so, like... Gaia's Blessing is a bad card. You're not wrong, Rexbox. You're not, you're not wrong. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. I think we kill Dr. Dre first, right? That's a good, that's a good draw. Am I on 14 in the sideboard? You might be right. I think you might be right that my sideboard's a card light. We'll fix that after. Yeah, we can, we can put a third questing beast in the board. Card's good in the control matchups. Because he's Dr. P. Rizzle, chat. The young pyromancer. Now the question is, do they sacrifice both their Meyer Tritons in order to draw a card? When we just figure this. Yeah, and, like, the thing is, with how many lands we have to play a crappy lawyer, you basically need to be in a third color anyways. And I think that, uh... You basically need to be in a third color anyways. I think black probably provides more utility than the other the other third colors. It's a very disfiguring game of Magic, chat. That's a good one. I'm gonna lose Golos here. Two cards off escaping this. One card off of escaping that. Opponent's username is great, by the way. Glitter Blossom. Yeah, maybe Hidden Flame. Like I said, I'm willing to entertain that this card could just be bad. That's why I cut two of them. I also, um, your statement, I kind of don't fully agree with your statement. Because, like, goblins, for example, goblins, for example, is not an Embercleave deck, and Yarok's body is good there. Mm, that's a good catch that the opponent could have saved. Could have saved their thing. Could, could tower the one we're targeting to save the other. They're probably dead either way, but... That's a good observation. Hold on to that land for now. Just in case we draw a field. My control deck is good against the mid-range deck. Who to thunk? Who to thunk? I think this style of matchup is excellent for us.
I bluffing anything by not grabbing your hand? Nah, just protecting it from discard spells. Or uh, agonizing or worse deck. You could maybe make the argument that because I have Cavalier, they have a good agonizing or worse target anyways. It's probably not unreasonable. For yeah, it definitely looks like I'm one sideboard card short. We'll fix that after this match. I called it Saltai Field on. I called it Saltai Field on Deckmaster or Stream Deck or whatever it's called. Trim in a Boreal Grazer. They still have not fixed the face down card, no. Still, still an issue. Yes, they also have not fixed the hand reveal bug. Which the hand the hand reveal bug is more erroneous than the other one, in my opinion. The face down card, because like the hand reveal bug like gives you bad information in the actual game, which is pretty pretty awful. That seems fair, right? They traded their Titan for a Titan. Croxa is definitely one of their better cards in this matchup. They need to apply as much pressure as they can as quickly as they can, and Croxa lets them do that. Yeah, the card back was the opponent's sleeve as well. Continuing over in that bug that your deck uses the opponent's sleeve. At least, at least they're consistent. Are they out of a land? That's great for us. Oh, am I trading? I think the answer is no, because I have a Cavalier next turn. All right, so our best draw here is Golos or Bajukabog. See some incarnation. Sounds good, comic. Going to hold Grazer in hand to discard to Croxa when it escapes here. They've got 12 cards in here, so they are going to get to re-escape it next turn, but it is what it is. Croxa slash claim can hit both cards. Sure. But why why do I care about that? Why is that why is that meaningful? Why are you telling that to me? How do I play differently to prevent that? Please explain. How is your how is your information that you're pointing out actionable? Think I should hold my land last turn to play around that after my opponent just missed a land drop?
Interesting. They have a claim plus on their village rates here. Just noxious grass, sure. Block. I think I'm fine offering the beast for the Meyer Triton here. Getting their, getting their creatures smaller is ideal. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana total here. So I can scry and still play a four mana spell. So I think we're going to go ahead and scry at upkeep. So they get to priest us here, but then Yorian's going to eat the Chandra next turn. So like, that's not a big deal. So our best pickup here is like a removal spell for Meyer Triton, so that way we can kill Croxa. Or kill Chandra, sorry. Whatever her name is. Yeah, yeah, the red black deck's very good. Uh J Ray added it back to the queue again today. And if we have another good run with it next time, it's definitely going up on the site. This is one of the decks that did well at the last Toglandia Open where Tefri and friends were banned. Tefri and Wreck. Am I in the market for another Field of the Dead? I think the answer is no. So like I'm killing this and then I'm killing Chandra, but then they're getting to escape Croxa next turn. Like they have enough stuff in here to escape it twice more. So we are we are in a little bit of trouble here. The good the good news is that like land drops are at least creatures, so we've got that going for us. I don't like drawing a Boreal Greaser and hate myself for bottoming those. You know, I wonder if I'm supposed to keep the Baron more there. So that way it puts another card in my bin towards escaping this Uro. I think that's probably the line, huh? They have another claim we're dead here. So he says. I think we're just dead now, right? I have to draw Thrag Tusk. Yeah, and I couldn't if I scried. I didn't have enough mana to cast it. Shoe, thanks for the two thirds of a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Just keeping me around. I'm happy with how I boarded. I'm going to go ahead and run it back. Just don't want Greaser, and I'd rather have some more spot removal. Let's try that. <laughs> the professor's great. MTG Arena tweeted out 10 more days to participate in Jumpstart, and he responded with, nah, just keep it up. See, chat, you can board out your other three copies of a Boreal Grazer if you just draw your one you keep in in your opener. Easy, easy game.
how can one learn this power? Or practice flipping coins? Yeah, yeah, draw, draw your one of in your 80 card deck in your opener. It's very easy. Look at this incredibly castable Cavalier of Thorns chat. I think Field is going to end up being again. No. I think Field's the third best ramp payoff in this format behind Ulamog and Ugin. You gonna draw two here, make a token maybe? Yeah, I think I think the Nissa Ugin Ulama Gramp decks tend to be better than the dedicated field of the dead decks like what we're playing. We mostly we mostly play this deck on this channel for nostalgia purposes. People are trying to tell you that all of the answers to field are terrible. Here's the best answer to field of the dead kill your opponent the same the same people that are complaining they can't answer field of the dead their decks also can't answer ulamog most likely they're also they're also going to get hosed by other various ramp payoffs that exist there's some some people that just like are floored at the idea that like the game has to end all right do you have village rights they tap their tower here again. Yep. Little opponents made a mistake with the tower a couple of times now. Yeah, they, they should have left Phyrexian Tower up. Because again, if you sacrifice the one I'm targeting, the other one doesn't die. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The auto tapper is not kind to uh to this card. Them them missing Croxa here is huge. Like last last game was a great example of just like how important Croxa is in their archetype. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and play and cast Yori in here. I don't think I can afford to pay three more life to draw a card. I can counter U Ulamog and other lies we tell ourselves, right? Ulamog only three for one me! Fist pump! You, you show them zombie suits, boss. Get them. They draw another village rights? <laughs> sure. Why, why not? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that late yesterday, too, Silence. Like, it's easy to look at Field of the Dead and be like, Field of the Dead is the reason why my bad deck can't win. It takes self-reflection to look at your deck list and go, well, my deck's probably not that good. All right, this game's over now, right? We're done here. Let's do the Swag Tusk again. Industrious Revolution. Thanks for the 16 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Ah, 
perpetual spoiler season. I really wish Wizards just, like, did slightly fewer products. I'm just, I'm tired, chat. It's like, I, I, like, magic is, like, literally my job, and I, I can't keep up with all the products that they have coming out. I'm glad, I'm glad a lot of them just don't impact me. Cows have four udders for a reason, all the milk gig, something like that. Look at that, the F2K apparel bot works. It's like, I thought that bot was in here, just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I'm excited to try the, the Jinx deck. Basically, the discard aggro deck splashing uh, Fridge Lord for uh, for Entreat to find your Jinxes more consistently. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, is that you, Polad? Good games. Good luck in the rest of your laddering today. Apologies to people who hate leaks, but you can't take the pee out of the swimming pool, so I talk about leaks on my channel when they come up. This is a sweet card. This is probably super playable. Taps for colorless. Just pay for it's a 2 2, pay for it's a 4 4, pay for it. Like, this is like, uh, this is very, very close to colorless Raging Ravine. Like, obviously, Raging Ravine is uh, color fixing, but like, this doesn't come into play tapped. I guess, uh, like super playable and that if that's a real card obviously it's a leak it could not be a real card greenland rats You can tap it to pump itself if you're not going to attack within an end of turn. Sure. Yeah. I'm gonna trade here if they attack. Our mana base is a little bit awkward here because like this is gonna have to fetch another forest which means I'm really far off of activating these field of the dead still. Uh, creature lands, if you would, lawyer. So we're two, we're two lands off of activating field once we get a forest here. So they didn't jumpstart quasi-duplicate, which means we could be getting disdainful stroke tier counterspell of some sort. If this resolves, we want an untapped green source. 
We want untapped green source we don't already have. And then we want this to resolve and give us another land we don't already have. And then we get to make two zombies and stabilize the board. So if we get a land we don't have here, we're in a great spot. Nailed it. There's 10 cards in my bin. Who writes these plots? Listen, sometimes I predict things that are good for me. We played Brazen Bar. Are we going to get rid of my Cavalier Thorn somehow? Sure. Resolves. Uh, block. This seems bad. Throwing away two elementals for one point of damage seems loose. They're probably on dual caster mage combo. Yeah, I can see that. Let's start with this, because we can hit another field before we play Blast Zone. Five, six. So I'm going to shock this in because I can double Uro this turn. Do I double Uro? Or do I just escape this one? Maybe I just escape this one. Yeah, let's do that. Get one of that attacks. Well, this, this pays me more life next turn, right? So, like, this gets to start attacking next turn. Speaking of gaining life. Okay, so if we don't get punked out this turn, the Thrag Tusk and the Uro life gain should put it away. Yeah, I think I think if we if we get an untap, we're gonna slide the game quickly into garbage time. We're gonna punk out. Are we worried about? I don't know, like a bounce spell and then some burn. They could they could be playing dual caster mage combo though, so like they could technically go land, make infinite dual casters. Right? No, they need one more card. So they need a card to discard. Okay, they can't they can't combo this turn, they don't have enough resources. They could also not be what's the combo? Dual caster mage plus any copy creature card makes infinite two twos. Hey, Hydro Farmer. Thanks for the two months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. We've got Splinter Twins at home. Yeah, exactly. I should probably count before I just shock this in, but like I've got 11 life gain rolled up, so I'm just going to do it. You put this on Grixis aggro, we definitely can, Charles. Ooh, that's a good call. Prioritize getting Blast Zone to three this turn in case they draw the combo. I like it.
keep the Uro that's not going away. Obviously. And I think I just pass here so I can put this blast zone to three this turn. We'll just we'll just only we'll only gain eleven this turn instead of fourteen. I like trimming one land in a lot of matchups. Like, they probably don't have stuff for us to field of rune. I'm going to trim the Yara because they're a little bit slow at the top end. I'm going to trim a couple of Arboreal, or trim an Arboreal Grazer. Bring in some spot removal. Now, I don't think I really want to race with Questing Bees so much as I want to just try and control the board. I think we're just a uh, control deck here as opposed to racing them. In my five color gates field base of Zed deck. Sometimes you just can't fit everything you need to play in uh in 60 cards, right? We actually we started without Yorian and we were gonna deck out against an Esper player, and I was just off it. I was like, alright, well let's let's just put some more cards in our deck so we can not deck out against control. Who wants to who wants to deck out against control chat? Not me. Not me, that's for sure. Decking out is for plebs. I think I do this. This is more likely to guarantee the Cavalier next turn, but... If I don't Cavalier till 5, that's fine. Scry me a river, baby. Bottoms up. I'm going to start triggering Field of the Dead next turn. Swag Tuskerson, come to daddy. I'm going to decline attacking just in case they have something like Tricky Dick to flash it and block. Little, it's a little windy in here, chat. A little bit, a little bit windy. Oh, oh yeah, I should have held this back. All right, they didn't have anything. Got it. Nailed it.
So, since I'm going to have 8 mana next turn, do I Yorian instead of Cavalier? Probably not. Oh, I should, maybe I should play the untapped land to play around Dispute. Well, I guess if they're disputing, they're not, uh, they're not reason borrowing me. Okay. If we get to Yori and the Thrag Tusk, we'll be in a very good spot. They have more Ionides, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. They have Ionides, ready to draw a removal spell. Right, well, you know. A little it's a little windy in this game chat a little little windy so they're going to 12 they're gonna attack us to four yes blinking swag test gives you five life and a three three because it's bottom trigger here is leaves play because they explicitly printed thrag tusk with the intent of having it hose vapor snag They are, and this is it. So they are dual caster mage combo. Okay, so we're we're dead, right? Because Thrag Tusk is on top, and I can't beat their infinite. So for people that haven't seen this before, they target one of their creatures with Quasi Duplicate, and then with Quasi on the stack, they flash in dual caster mage, and now they can make an unlimited number of two twos, and then at the very end of the chain, the last copied Quasi Duplicate will copy their Brazen Borrower. So we're dead here. Bones build, sweet. Neat, neat build of the archetype. We had tried the opponent's combo on stream when Tefri was legal, and that combo does not work while Tefri's in play, so we quickly shelved it. Might be something worth revisiting in a post-Tefri world. The borrower wasn't in play, that's a draw. If the borrower wasn't in play, they can't start comboing Niv. But if you, like, kill their borrower, yeah, you could draw the game. Bottom the Baron more here. Don't need double black. This is a green black land. Hey, Captain Buckles. Thanks for the 11 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Does Arena actually detect a draw? I believe so. It detected a draw with Hostage Shaker loops last season. So I imagine that's something very similar. How does draw work in best of three? So best of three with regards to magic is technically a misnomer. Competitive matches of magic on the ladder are technically best first to two wins. They are not best of three. So if you draw a game, you play another game. You go to go to game four, potentially. Timers remain the same, etc. How can a draw happen? Well, both players can go to zero life total at the same time with something that deals damage to both players, or you could get the game into a state where the same game action keeps occurring and no player has an option to break the loop. How do you end it by fizzling the copy time, Lord? Please explain.
Flip Garrick and Clever and Purse is my favorite draw loop. Yeah, we did that one on Moto. Ooh, punished for leading on Rejuvenator. I do have this Memorial to Folly at some point that's going to get to pick something up, so that's nice. I'm pretty sure you have to choose two targets, unless I'm confusing the wording on the card. Yeah, Dual Caster Mage has to copy. You may choose new targets for the spell. Yeah, it's a, it's a mandatory loop. Unless unless someone kills the thing in between, it has to keep going. Have a, have a few different things I could do this turn. I could Heartless Act the Brazen Borrower plus Memorial pick something up. I could grab Yorian and play it. I think I'm Heartless Acting plus picking up Thrag Tusk here. Because if I shock to grab Yorian and play it, I then put myself on a faster clock with this. It's an ability with more than one target and it's looping, but you could change it. You have to break the loop so it's not a draw. Sure. But I, I'm just timing people out. I'm just, just stop it. You weren't, you weren't listening. The people that are actually me in chat weren't listening to the conversation we were actually having. Stop it. Get some help. See if we can dodge Aether Gust here. Okay. We we could theoretically get comboed like this turn though, right? The Aura Dog thinks the 26 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. That is a fantastic draw. Because it insulates me against their combo. How's Magic felt after the most recent bans? Better than previous. Maybe this is wrong, because if they have negate, they could like negate this and then untap and combo me. What do you have to Heartless Act to stop the combo? You Heartless Act the uh, Dual Caster Mage that tries to get copied by the by the Quasi Duplicate. You kill you kill the first Dual Caster Mage after it's been targeted. It's correct. Do that now so we don't get burned out or punked out by mistake here. No, I'm just not doing magic online content in the short term, Captain Buckles. I had a number of people who asked about the potential for magic online content in the sub survey, but Moto's just so slow and painful. 
between between Arena and Legends of Runeterra, I feel like I've got enough content variety to keep me entertained, so... I don't intend to dip back into Moto. I have no idea how the inner workings of MTG and mechanics work with Loops Lickarp, so I don't have a good question to you. There are a number of other people. If you're someone that's looking for Pioneer content, I'd recommend checking out Todd Anderson's stream. He is a paper boomer who loves Magic Online. I'm sure Caleb Durward will occasionally be streaming some Pioneer on Magic Online. There are a number of great paper boomers. I believe Reed Duke is currently live streaming some Magic Online. I'm, I'm here to embrace the future, chat. Uh, the Awful Todd is banned from playing Magic the Gathering now. It took them a while, but they finally did that. So that's great. Goblins, eh? Goblins, eh? Darn kids and their cancel culture and their accountability. It's our first time playing against goblins in almost three hours, so... Muxus me, daddy. You know just how I like it. Muxus me harder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're dead. I think we've died. If you don't know who I'm referring to, don't worry about it. Life's happier. Awful people thrive on being talked about. All right, definitely a cage matchup. Uh, actually, trophy's probably not good. I probably don't want to give them lands. Uh, hmm. Burpsy, thanks for the 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Winota is bad, but Mux is still seeing. Yeah, our our deck is very reasonable against Winota. It is not so good against Muxus, I don't think. I think the Goblins matchup's probably bad. This doesn't block very well. It usually comes out against Aggro. Looking for another Ur here. Looking for, like, some five-mana payoffs. God, I really hope they turn three Muxus me again. That would be so great.
you know, I'm probably supposed to play the Swamp first there and cycle the Tranquil Thicket this turn. If you think my deck can play a triple black card, I'd encourage you to do some math with the mana base. To the person that recommended a triple black card in chat. Doing all right, Hawk. Trying to sweat Muxus over here. Hey, I am supposed to trade Blastone for Skirt since they're missing land drops. It's the first time we played against Goblins today. Yeah, it's not super popular. So I can chump block Muxus here with the Rejuvenator. And then I can Maelstrom Pulse it next turn, which is nice. Have enough cards in the bin to escape Uro as well if I want. Would I rather escape Uro or blow up Skirt Prospector? Probably, probably the Skirt Prospector at this point, huh? Then they can't Muxus me again for two to three more turns, most likely. I don't understand your question, Hidden Flames. You asking about building mana bases? So if this finds an untapped land, I get to... I get to play Drag Tusk this turn. Okay. Survived a Muxus hit, chat. It's not bad. Mana, mana math article there, Hidden Flame. I think there's also a website, MTG on Curve or something like that. I don't know, a lot of the community tools like that I don't use. So I, have a, I have a math background that understand how to use a probability distribution fairly quickly. And that's not a slight on people who don't have a math background and can't do that, but I'm just saying I'm not super familiar with the tools that exist because I don't use them personally. So... I have a choice to make here. If I... Play Fabled Passage and Fetch Forest. I can cycle the Tranquil Thicket this turn. But if I instead wait till after the Cavalier of Thorns, 
Well, I guess I don't want to play Breeding Pool because I want this to trigger on seven lands, right? Okay, yeah, so we're getting forward. Let's see, there is some merit to waiting to do this till I have seven lands so I get an extra zombie. So looking for cage or removal so that way we don't get mux this next turn. Well, nailed it. I unfortunately do not get to make Field of the Dead tokens this turn, but that's not that big of a deal. Definitely want to get Cage down here. Need to take the untapped land. Next turn, we get to uh, play Bajuka Bog out, trigger Field, play Uro, trigger Field. Probably just want four cages in the sideboard, honestly. I had three. Oh, I never added a 15th card to the sideboard, did I? We'll just add a fourth cage. I'm pretty sure we've been playing. Oh. Oh, I can. That's true. That's true. This does stop Uro, doesn't it? That's fine. It's still the right play. You are correct that it stops Uro, though. What I can, however, set up is I could pick up Yorian. And then next turn, I can blink the cage, escape Uro, and then the cage will come back in. Yor Yorian, Yorian blinks any permanence you control, so you can get rid of the Graft Digger's cage till end of turn. Oh, right. We haven't restarted Magic Arena at all today. It's been three hours. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm a little sad that the initial iteration of this that we played doesn't feel like it's real anymore. That being said, this build that we ended up on here felt quite reasonable. Um, I do think that this deck as constructed is probably still awful against Ulamog Ugin ramp decks. And I genuinely don't think you can fix that while still being this interactive low, lower to the ground ramp deck. Um, I am going to update the Yarok field list on my site to call it Salte Field with this Yorian build, I think. I do think this is much better than the build that had been up there previously. With the, with the loss of Nexus of Fate, Having the extra 20 cards makes your control matchup much more reasonable. So I think I'm happy with where where we ended overall. I do think there's a chance that maybe you aren't supposed to play any Yarok even. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to give up on my old boy just yet. But there's a, there's a chance that it's strictly competitively optimal to like try other things. The Ragtusk was excellent today. That card's really good. So all right. At any rate, we are going to shift gears for the rest of the stream and roll on into some Rune Terra to wrap things up today. If you haven't seen that before, that is Riot's uh, new digital, new-ish, been out for a little bit now, digital card game that I've been enjoying a lot of that's available on Windows, iOS, 